as flat design becomes more dimensional, shadows are making a comeback. These drop shadows are making a comeback. And this is an example here in front of us of a modern uh, drop shadow. And this modern drop shadow uh, sort of implies that there's a large soft light source and that this object is very small. And the light's kind of wrapping around all sides and creating this gentle, soft little shadow behind it that makes it look like it's kind of uh, popping up off the page for touch, this looks like something that you can press in. So this dimensionality is really, really helpful with user experience and calling attention to a button or something that's pressable or something that's uh, separating itself from the background. If we go over here, though, this is the kind of drop shadow that Sketch gives us. It doesn't look very good. Um, you can lower the opacity of it all you want. You can increase or decrease the blur of it all you want. Uh, but the problem is that the shadow is emitted at the size of the object. So in this case, um, making the shadow more blurry, it comes off all four sides. And if I start to push it down with the Y position, it starts to come off the bottom too much before we fix the problem of it sticking out the top. So what do we do? It's actually really very easy, very simple. <clears throat> we want to use two rectangles instead of one. So over here in this example, there's no shadow applied yet. But what I'm going to do is select this box. I'm going to press Command D to duplicate it. And over on the Layers panel, you can see that I have one on top, one in the middle, and one on the bottom. The one on the bottom is the background, though. So really, I just have two of these white rectangles. I'm going to select the bottom one, and I'm going to give it a shadow. I'm going to keep that shadow's Y position at 2, uh, but I'm going to set the blur to 50. Oops. There we go. So you can see I already have the problem that I had earlier on the uh, first page that we looked at where the shadow is coming off all of the sides. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the top handle and make it half as tall. And I'm going to hold Option and grab the right handle and bring in the sides a little bit. And you can see that this is already working. It's already pretty much problem solved uh, simply by reducing the size of the object that's casting the shadow. Um, we now have uh, the implication that light is wrapping around the, the top, the left, and the right, creating a soft and more realistic and tangible shadow. Another thing that you'll see people doing uh, that's very popular right now is uh, if this box were a color, let's go ahead and assign it a color. I'm going to make it a uh, sort of blue color here. And with this blue color, uh, what you'll see people doing is uh, giving it sort of a glow in the shadow of that blue color as if the light is bouncing around, reflecting off of the blue color and uh, hitting the background, presuming that the back of it is the same color as the front if you think of it in 3D space. Uh, so this is really easy. If I select uh, our shape that's underneath that has the shadow on it, I can do a two finger click on the shadow here. I can choose to duplicate it. And then on the duplicate, I'm going to select the color. I'm going to select the eyedropper, and then I'm going to click on this blue color. So that might be a bit too much, but now we can go and we can play with the opacity of our shadows here, and we can get this to a place where we're happy. And with that glow, it's got to be subtle. It should be very, very subtle. We can mess with the Y position of the shadow too, and once we're happy with it, if we think it's too subtle, we can break uh, what our eyes have grown accustomed to seeing. Our, our eyes are seeing the blue and they're seeing the blue behind it and our eyes are sort of adjusting. So what we want to do here is select the blue. I'm going to change it to red. And then you can see that the shadow, our eyes are having a lot of trouble discerning uh, that there is blue in that shadow. So I'm going to select that layer again. I'm going to click on the blue and I'm going to switch it to red. And watch the moment that I click when the shadow switches. There we go. It's red. And now suddenly it looks more red uh, before our eyes have a chance to adjust. Uh, but really, your eyes should adjust to it. It's not something where you should say, hey, why is that shadow red? It's something where uh, it's just sort of behaving the way the light source would behave. And because of that, it just looks more real and more tangible. It should be very, very, very subtle. And if it's not so subtle, then consider reducing the opacity of that shadow. So this is a pretty cool trick. This is a way to get your drop shadows looking like 2016 drop shadows and not like 2001 drop shadows. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial. If you do, please subscribe if you haven't already. Check out LearnSketch.com, and I'll have more cool stuff coming soon. I'll also include a big fat discount code on my Udemy course to learn Sketch 3 from A to Z in the description below this video.